What is up, everybody? So, as tradition, let's uh, have some clapping for the start of the stream. So, today, um, there's already a ton of people in the chat. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, it's another bear build stream. So, first off, I apologize. There's going to be some background noise for the next couple of minutes, but that should go away soon. So, hopefully, that doesn't bother anyone too much. And I don't have a whole lot of time to build today because I have some other stuff I need to do this evening. But I was hoping that we could uh, get the LCD put together, put it on, and get the heat bed mounted, uh, get the wires on, and do a handful of things uh, just to push us just a little bit further into completing our bare build. So, how's everyone doing today? Hopefully everything is going well for everyone. And let's just start right in with building, shall we? So we are on the step of putting our LCD screen together. So I am using uh, a, I'm going to use, I have a couple of different screens. The Prusa screens and the, the riprap screens are just a little bit different. The, the riprap discount controller and the Prusa controller are slightly different. You can swap the plugs around and make them the same. But this screen is an LDO screen that is black and white. I would really like to find an orange screen, so if anybody knows where I could get one of those, let me know. But uh, this one is actually going to be black and white, but it is, it is designed the same as a Prusa screen. And if you want to save yourself some headache down the road, label both ends of these LCD cables. One and two. But an orange screen would be really cool, but we'll run with this screen for now. How's the craziness there? Well, it's pretty crazy. Uh, there's nothing that's open. <laughs> uh, I mean, the grocery stores are open still. Um, the uh, but most every like school is closed for for who knows how long. Oh, I'm I'm in Kansas City, so I'm really close to the Kansas. I'm on the Missouri side, but I'm close to the Kansas border, and uh, all of the Kansas schools are closed for the rest of the year. So, uh, yeah, things have been pretty interesting. But so far at my house, everything's good. Printers get built as usual. The building goes on. Back again. I, uh, Scott, I dig the black screen as well. I think it's an awesome upgrade. I ended up buying like three or four of them when Printed Solid had them marked down. Uh, I even gave one out as a prize. I, I just think they're a really cool upgrade. And there are other colors. I've seen like red ones and things like that, um, but I haven't gone searching for one. Printed Solid only has the black ones as far as I know. And I just line these up based on my cool handy dandy front cover here. I got that one pretty, hey man. This one needs a little bit. I got both of them kind of close. <laughs> uh, rest of the school, yeah, Kansas is that way. I don't know what Missouri is going to do. So far, Missouri is going to try to go back on April 6th. So they have a couple more weeks. But uh, we'll see how that progresses. Jimmy from NASA is here. Chris Gulata, yes. Uh, Sonic Beast, Edge of the Tech. Sergio is here. Uh, Chris Lane, Ventura 3D. What is up? Max is here. What's up, Max? 3D Printing Lala, Robert Reynolds, Pete C. Hello, everyone. Glad you could join me. Again, these are all impromptu streams. I realize I'm not scheduling any of these, but I'm just building as I have a little bit of free time here and there. don't like to push on these too much. They're just a little bit, but 
fits on that side pretty good. Yes, this is one of the black printed solid screens. Made by LDO. And I'm not sure if LDO makes all the Prusa screens. They're really similar if they don't. So they might as very well make all the Prusa screens. Something's holding that up. Maybe my bare arm is not compatible with my Prusa cover. What do you think? Just push it in, it'll be fine. There we go. Much better. Cool. That looks nice. James, Restaurant 3D is here. What is up? Uh, getting along with the Mini. The Mini's good. The Mini's over there printing right now. I did a whole lot of PLA. I'm already working on PETG. Uh, Quarantine, no problem, PC. We'll uh, we'll get it eventually. We can trudge on with the black for now and then uh, switch out to orange. Pete has some orange sleeving, so we can make it even more orange. So he's going to send it to me as whenever he can, so that'd be good. Uh, Rail bear right now. Nice. Okay. So I need some 10 millimeter screws. Is there a parts list? There's not a complete parts list, uh, but I intend to make one. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna do my best to get a list of everything that you will need to build one of these pieces parts. Saving one Prusa Mark III kit at a time. Hi there from the UK currently quarantined in self-isolation. Love all your content. Keep up. The great work, Zany Face. <laughs> zany Face. I like that one. Owen, oh, thank you very much for the tin. That is much appreciated. Uh, I am doing my best to keep the content coming. So at least some of us have something to watch or do, right? Uh... It helps me just as much as it might help everyone else that needs something to watch. So I appreciate the tip though. And we need some five by tens and they will get C nuts. What is this? So we got eights, tens, and twelves, I think. What were these? Eights, tens, and twelves. The nice thing about all this extrusion, well, I mean, there's a couple of nice things. <laughs> I got it all the way across in one shot. Uh, the, there's a lot of nice things about the extrusion, but uh, it really gives you a lot more freedom to place certain things wherever you would like them to go. So that's pretty cool. I don't know exactly how I would like to run these wires. I know we're going to go under... They do have some LCD, the flat cable clips, in the uh, on the GitHub that you print out, and I did print out a half, a handful of them, but uh, we'll have to figure out the best placement for this. It's like 65 degrees. It's ra it's kind of rainy here, but it's like 65 degrees today, and then it's going to be like 35 tomorrow. Too many partial projects you're procrastinating on. 
uh, yeah, I know, uh, I know that feeling all too well. I've got so many partial videos that I'm procrastinating on. Before I can make any more content, I have to finish this build so I can clean my table off. Dan is here, what's up? Let's just kind of line it up even when you say. Okay. These will run back in this direction at some point. So there's that. LCD is on. There we go. Some of the background noise is going to uh, die down for us. Heat bed, PSU, assembly black. I do have to find some countersunk screws. And we also have to put the power leads on here. Okay. So this is a Mark 52 bed. Uh, I got it from Printed Solid. It even says Printed Solid on it. But uh, I'm not, again, not sure who makes these. But uh, it looks really close to a stock one to me. So we'll just say that whoever makes this one makes the same ones for Prusa. I don't know that to be true. Let's say it. All right, so I've got, these are both power leads. Maybe I have to make my own leads for, oh no, because the Einzi has terminals, right? Yeah. Don is here. What's up, Don? <laughs> There's no board in this box. There's a lot of in-stops and stuff, though. Here I was thinking I was all smart putting stuff away. It wouldn't be a live stream without looking for everything. Well, I'm 100% sure, though, that that has the tie-down terminals on it. But I would think that if they were bed wires that they would have eyelet terminals on them. I did get the thermistor, which we can put that on. It must be true, I just heard on, it, everything on the internet must be true. Absolutely. So we got a thermistor, at least we can get away from this thing. So I might have to make some of my own heat bed wires, maybe. Which is not a huge deal, as long as I have some crimps. Finally order the Mosquito, awesome. Uh, I do have a Copperhead on the way. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to fashion that onto the tool changer, and try it out that way. So that'll be cool. So, what, so they run two sets uh, by default, don't they? Well, yes, they do. Okay. So that's what I wanted to know. So we're good there. So I'm going to have to make up some wires. Let's do that. Hopefully I have a couple of crimps that are close. I probably actually have a set of wires like that that we could just steal. <laughs> um, loops. And the other side, yeah, the other side of the terminal too. So these will work. And... Um, don't really have any, well, here's one. I'm hoping I had a couple of these, but maybe I don't. 
I have larger gauge ones. Let's see what uh, size wire we're going to use. Wait, wait, eh, that one's kind of big. Aha! We don't have very many, but we have a couple. Let's see what uh, wire gauge we got here. I think 14 will do it. Second drawer left corner. Thank you. Um, I guess we can kind of somewhat just slightly guess on length here. It's not actually very long. I'll let this serve. <laughs> Uh, since I don't know the status of the end of this, I'm going to cut it off. Let's give us a little bit to work with here, but... Greg is back. What's up, Greg? Hey, Travis. Same old Shane is here. What's up, Shane? How you doing, man? Hopefully you're surviving. Let's go with that. In fact, let's uh, kind of compare my length with our thermistor here. It won't be as long as the thermistor, but let's go this route. Red or what? Oh, curmudgeon, I'm not sure what you mean. On my head? Uh, I'm starting to go gray, but... Uh... I am uh, very, my hair is very brown. What size are those? Uh, ten, they're, they're all three, right? They're all three. Three should fit on these just fine. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, all the orange is messing with the color. That, and this isn't just orange, and anybody that has a Prusa will know. Uh, this is Prusa orange, and it is really orange. One, where'd the other one go? There it is. Wasn't great till you started 3D printing. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, <laughs> um, I don't know that I was either. <laughs> uh, what we were, uh, somebody and I were talking, I think it might have been Tom Lama actually. Uh, Mad Mike's here. What's up, Mad Mike? Um, we were talking about uh, printed solid orange, and I like to refer to it as burn your retina orange. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love the color, but it is bright. Sure. No reminder from YouTube. That's par for the course. Uh, 
I'll have to get some more of these connectors now. I didn't realize I had so few. Uh, Richard, I have not had time to catch up on email, but I will as soon as I can. I've got so much email. What they should have called it. I think at one time that was like traffic orange or something. You usually have good notifications on YouTube. It seems like I don't get notified from anything. Even if I have the bell checked, uh, I don't get the reminders. So maybe I need to check uh, my settings or something. I don't know. But okay, heat bed. So one of these, what design, do, what, I thought one of these you had to flip. Are they all over under? No, that's just the cover. They're all on top. And I need some nylon nuts. So hopefully that is the only set of wires I have to make, because I really don't have uh many more connectors. Not for this anyway. You got the note. See, Sergio didn't get the notification the other day, uh, but he got it today, so I don't know. Okay, 10 millimeters. Uh, and then some nylock nuts. And a couple of washers. These washers are really hard to handle. Eric's using tra Google Translate. No worries. We'll uh, we'll do our best with it. Okay. Did I lock tight the frame assembly on the threads? Uh, there really isn't any, uh, there's no screws that aren't on a T-nut on the frames. So no, I T-nuts, Loctite, all that. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's anything wrong with it. I don't see it as necessary, but I don't know if it's a really a good idea even. But no, I did not Loctite them. If they were threaded into the extrusion, I might consider that. I'm not a huge fan of loctiting anything, actually. Stop doing stuff for a minute. I'm, so all I'm going to do is hook up the negative wire, Tom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uncle Ron. Not done yet. We're getting there, though. We're still going to... I think we're still going to need two more streams to complete this build. Well, one more stream to complete... And uh, one stream just to hang out and print some stuff. 
But it's only Wednesday. I said I wanted to get it done by the end of the week. Alright, so we're good there. I should have a cover printed out. Here's one piece. Uh, where's the bottom piece? Oh, there it is. Cool, cool. The Czech Republic, the, birth, the birthplace of the Prusa printer. Welcome. A Corona Benchy. <laughs> I need to get one of those, you know, the mallets that have the I don't even know what's made out of urethane or something with the they got the little yellow cap on them. I need to get one of those just to have it, and then I'll ne I still never use it. I'll just use whatever I have in my hand. <laughs> Listen, this one will be the standard uh, Mark III S extruder, not the one with the little chimney on it for the MMU two. And what, uh, it's also a 10 millimeter. Anything around that's heavy. I've been known to use some pretty creative hammers over the years. Uh, I believe cinder block is on that list. <laughs> Let's see, these connectors are just a little bit large. beer bottle. <laughs> you get one good whack. <laughs> Harry would look nice on the wall. I agree. I agree. All right. It's hard to use the pliers around these magnets. Top cover is on. That should be beautiful. And we need to put a thermistor on here. Printed solid, if you order these things, they will give you the, the uh, metal patch and the captain patch for your thermistor so if you order it with the third you do have to order the thermistor but they will give they will send these with it so that's cool uh that's got a landing screw where let's just put it as good as we can right here Uh, 32 millimeter wrench, absolutely. That's a hefty piece of wrench right there. It has a completely different meaning, absolutely. Fernando, thank you very much. I 
You know, I dig the orange. You know I do. I appreciate that. We're getting quite a bit of stuff done now, too, so we're getting there. Okay, now that that is connected, Okay, I have a little bit smaller wire wrap that we can use for that. It's giving me a suntan. Nice. for the crescent. <laughs> I used to have one of those giant crescent wrench somewhere. I wonder what happened to that. I haven't seen that thing in years. I found it on the side of the road. Like it fell out of the back of somebody's truck or something. That's the only reason why I remember it. Is that bed frame metal as it is available by itself? It is available from a couple of different places. I believe, I, I'll have to go check, but I believe mine came from Prusa. And that's gonna be the sticky wicket with some of these parts, is because you have to be a Prusa customer to buy spare parts from them. And some of these parts did come from Prusa. But I will do my best to find you alternatives. There are alternatives for all this stuff out there. It's just sometimes it's going to be a little bit harder to find or you might not be able to get as close to Prusa's design as you would like, but you can find them. What do we use for these guy? Uh, tins as well. Yep. Yeah, they have, uh, I've seen, you could probably source everything from AliExpress, um, if that's the direction you want to go. I am still using the SK Go. Um, I was planning on bringing it to Murph. I had done testing and everything, and I had some models that I was going to print with it at Murph, but of course that didn't happen. So I haven't done anything with it since Murph was canceled, but I am still going to. Uh, I still plan on doing the review, of course, and all that good stuff. So I'll get back to it after we finish some of these builds. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get on that parts list. I promise. That's not necessarily the easiest thing to do <laughs> is go around and find all the links and kind of backwards design, you know, something to to get all the parts done. But uh I'll manage. We'll get we'll get there. My wire gauge might not be compatible with my holder. I might have to print another little holder on the bottom that allows for the larger wire gauge. They might use 16. This is 14. Yeah, 
Eh. Eh. Screw wasn't very happy. They just don't want to line up. There we go. It's much happier now. Where's that other one? Well, oh, that's the one I tried already. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to see this one print. I'm pretty excited about this build. I'm not always super excited about some of the builds. This one I definitely am. There we go. That should be nice and sound. Okay, here's where we gotta find some parts. So I need some 14 millimeter long M3 countersunk screws. And I have some. I don't have a ton of countersunk stuff, but let's just see what we have here. I've got a few different sizes, so I don't know how many M3s I have. Let's check it out. What do we got here? I got 12s and 16s. What did they say I needed? Oh, they say I can use 14s or 12s. Let's see. Uh, I got quite a few 12s. Let's see what's in here. That's a 12. This is exactly the same set, I'll bet you. Just smaller. Yep. So it looks like 12s or 16s is what I have. So let's see if we can make 12s work. I don't think it would matter because these, so these actually thread into the metal Y carriage. So I don't think it would matter if they were just two millimeters too long, but uh, let's go with 12. This is another part that you're going to have to like make or do something makeshift. Uh, to get them to work are these standoffs that they use. You could probably try to use brass standoffs or something with this configuration, but they just have these six millimeter spacers, these little spacers. I did order these from Prusa. There's a million different things you could use, but again, I kind of wanted to go with all the Prusa parts just to see how close I could get it. Greatest achievement to date. Well, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. These are always a little challenging for me to line up. See what I mean? There's quite a bit of screw on the end of that. I'm not, uh, not bad. What size we got here? That one's too small. <laughs> with the dad joke, coming in with the dad joke. 
Uh, drop in frames, we can check it for drop in frames. The internet all around everywhere has not been great. I, drop, I have dropped 1500 frames so far. It looks like it's healthy at the moment, but it would not surprise me if the internet drops frames. Yeah, 12s are gonna work splendidly. Excellent. That was one of the questions that I had. Will I have countersunk screws for this? It looks like we're going to have them. Four. Cool. Well, Carl, I wanted to try and see if it would fit first. <laughs> this is actually probably easier on this side. That one's just got a couple of threads in it. Am I building and printing all in this live stream? No, I've been breaking it out into multiple live streams. Uh, I'm just playing, I, did, I don't have very much time today, so uh, it won't be printing today. We'll have to come back. But it will be printing soon enough. Like I say, I think next stream... We'll get everything wired up, ready to go. And then, uh, then we'll do a stream where we just print stuff. Those are always easier anyway, so I can kind of uh, watch the chat a little better and you know how that goes. Everyone is on the internet, for sure. Lego Technics are awesome. I would buy more Lego, but they're, I mean, for the amount that I would probably play with it, they're very pricey. So I don't, uh, I don't purchase Lego, but they have some really cool kits. Um, there's a Lego land attached to like one of the shopping centers downtown and we were going through there and we stopped at the Lego store and they had some of the coolest kits, man. They had one that was um, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park, and behind him was the Jurassic Park gate. That kit was amazing. Very cool stuff. <laughs> I... High five all. Nope, no high fives. Go wash your hands. I did this. I did so well until I dropped that one. Now I'll drop it ten times. Where are they? I thought I had it in there. Turns out I was wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna have to knock it through. That went too well. I knew it couldn't have been that easy. That's funny. The magnets make it a real chore. There we go.
No gummy bears. I know. Uh, you know, I thought about that the other day on one of the streams. I should have bought gummy bears for this build. Because now I'm into the Prusa directions, right? And they're telling me to take gummy bear breaks. I don't have any, and then I get sad. Ridiculous. Okay. I'm not going to tighten those up yet. Let's flip to the other side here. Demolition man greeting. <laughs> uh. Okay, one more. Or no, I think I've got the one in the back still. I guess I'll get to do the one in the back. Okay, one more. We got this. Oh, don't, don't drop that. I don't think I bought any extras either. I thought I think I got just nine. I thought, well, maybe I thought, maybe I got ten. If I did get ten, the other one rolled away. So don't drop this one. Yeah, it's kind of a shame that everything is in a standstill. Can't get nothing. If I end up needing parts for this, we're going to be uh, hurting. Eat a Snickers. OB1. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Dave Kennedy's here. Uh, Dave tweeted out today he's working on a direct drive Titan um, tool changer head that looks pretty awesome. He sent me some files. I think I'm going to give that a try. At least that way I can use the Titan I already have since I really can't get any other parts at the moment. So that's cool. Okay. PSU parts. Okay, so the PSU is is a little creative because of the bare parts. So let's go to the bare parts. We need, we need some M4 screws, okay? M4 tens. And this is a Prusa supply. I got this from Prusa. I don't know that it's worth getting this exact supply, but I thought we'd go ahead and give it a try. Why not? Uh, I think I will attach it and then wire it after the fact. I'll just turn it up on its end and wire it. Okay, I need some brackets for that. Here's one, here's the other. Hmm.
Uh-huh. Very creative. I like it. Okay. So this will go on like this. Where is my M4 screw? It will go right here. If I can get it in there. Uh, it would be nice. It's really hard to, uh, it's really hard to show that and such. Uh, this is about as best as we can get, and that's, um, it's not great, I understand, but uh, with the setup that I have in the room that I have, that's about all I can do. Okay, cool. Uh, upper PSU on the PSU, then on the frame. First upper PSU on the PSU, then on the frame, then the bottom PSU mount. Okay, I got you. How, will that fit, actually fit through that hole? Not the, not the ones that I have. I might have to get creative with that. These are tins, right? Yep. Problem is I can't, uh, fit my finger in there. Know of any way to increase the buffer size in Clipper, same as Marlin? Octo is really not like eh. I, Not right off the top of my head. I'd actually have to go look at the code or something to figure that out. So no, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm not very fluent in Clipper, really. I know a little bit about it. I know enough to get it set up but I didn't do a whole lot of tweaking or anything with it. Blue kit with a galaxy black. Awesome choice. That will look amazing. Oh, and you can do it. I keep thinking if I could just angle it in there just right, it'll fall in. Got it. We lucked into that. And I did it the wrong way. Okay. Sitting right here. Uh, you want to get a like a Mark Forty Two, Mark Fifty Two style bed. Uh, are you in the U.S.? Uh, printed solid has both, if you're in the U.S. Um, or Ballo 3D printing. 
they have both. So on that one, I have a, did I already put that in there? No, I need a square nut. And a ten. What? B real one a ten. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I need. I I should have farmed this out to to a kid or something. It, that was uh, kind of a trick. I think this will be much easier though. This is slotted, so we'll just set this screw head in here. No worries, we got it done now. No worries. I need to have my nephew come over and do all this stuff for me. Okay, so I am going to snug this bottom one up, and then I'm going to turn it over, and uh, fish those T-nuts in there. What's up, 3D Medic Vince? How's it going? That way, since I have that snugged up, I can turn it over and not have to fight those T-nuts so much. And I like that. I don't have a ton more time today, but never fear. I will be back. We'll get this done and then we'll look and see what's up next here real quick. Just wanted to jump on and get a few more things done while we had some time. And what do we do? Tens? Line width, um, yeah, so are you talking about extrusion width? Um, I guess, I guess different slicers call it different things, right? So maybe you, maybe that's what we're talking, we're talking about extrusion width. Because uh, extrusion width is the width of that line, but it's also based on uh, how far apart the lines are from each other. So there, it, so some slicers treat that, most slicers probably treat that as kind of an algorithm. So if you set it to a certain thing, it's going to try to to line them up, if to to line line them accordingly. Unlike flow rate of some kind, which is just going to make them fatter. Um, The best explanation of that that I've seen, maybe we can put our end caps on. 
the best explanation of line width that I've seen, uh, search for um, Slick 3R, um, the Slick 3R manual. There, there's a man, Slick 3R has a manual of how all of the different settings and things like that work. There is one for extrusion width and it shows you exactly all the pictures that of, of how high the line is and how it, how it extrudes and they work together. It's a really, there's some really good diagrams and stuff in there about how all that works. Check that out. 205 watching. Awesome. Something. We watch Chris Shiley build a bear. Absolutely. Wall width. Uh, well, I mean, wall, wall width is just the number of shells, right? It, it all depends on what slice you're using. Yep, extrusion space, extrusion space, that's the one I'm talking about. So yeah, give that a look. That, that's going to make a lot more sense. Uh, what did I say? Oh yeah, caps. Let's put our caps on. Greg even made these fancy little caps to go on. So the Z ones, I believe, are blank. And in the, if you get that kit, that frame kit, they give you set screws for your little caps. If you can find them. Here they are. So the caps will stay on. Now the Z ones, I think all of the corner ones have bears on them, and the Z ones are blank. <clears throat> cool. Those might not be the right set screws. Maybe that that's one of the parts that has changed. No, they fit. Just takes a little doing. Why is it better than an Ender 3 Pro? Well, I don't know that it's better. I guess it depends what you've done to your Ender 3 Pro. Hmm. I'm gonna check something real quick. Yes, the new ones are M4s, that's why. Daniel, no problem. I uh, I try to get around to helping as many people as I possibly can. I don't always get there, but I try. Does that work? No, that's fine, Greg. I should have looked at my changes. Set screws are kind of hard to tell.
There's one. Where's my other top one at? This one. Cool. This is going to be one orange 3D printer, man. There's two. And I think the little feet are pretty somewhat generic, right? Yeah. I appreciate everyone joining on these very miscellaneous random streams. Uh, that's really awesome. And this should be a pretty cool build when it's done. Looking forward to it. That will be a uh, back corner. <laughs> Has us free to join. Uh, you're held captive, so you have no choice. You have to uh, you have to join the stream. If I was a full time YouTuber, this would be a uh, uh, time to make all the profit. Get on all the time. Everybody has to watch you. Uh, the this one. So the black power supply. Uh, there's a on the Chrome one. There's a big box. On uh, the black power supply, you just get this cover because it's it's kind of shielded already. So that's the only cover you're gonna get. We really should reprint that cover orange though. Maybe I'll work on that. Go to quarantine marathon. riveting action here while I put in these set screws. The frame still on back order? I know you said something about AliExpress was canceling stuff. Uh, the frames come from LDO, so that uh, that might be the case. Yep, I'm home uh, working my regular job. Uh, today I ended up logging off at about four. But yep, I'm still working the day job. My wife's home. They're all they're out of school, so we're all here. There we go. Hey Andy, how's it going? Linear rails, V-slot, or holes like this printer? Um, in the right configuration, I'm guessing linear rails would probably be the best. Uh, it does constrain you quite a bit, so if you're going to use linear rails, you have to be pretty accurate with everything else. 
Now, as far as these slot wheels and um, these slot wheels or any slot wheels running on extrusion versus using smooth rods and linear bearings, um, as long I would as long as they're the same type of quality, comparing them to each other. You know, if you're using quality parts, I don't think you would see one, the difference in between one or the other. Honestly, I think your your mileage would be almost exactly the same from this configuration to that one. Linear rails would be more high end at some point, you know, it but it depends on the machine that you're using them on. Uh, if you use them on a machine that really wasn't designed or had tolerances to deal with linear rails, you'd probably just cause yourself more pain than anything. It's not going to print today. In fact, I got to get off here in just a moment. Just a moment. But it will print this week. Andy, stay safe, man. Stay safe. Yep, it's the it's the Prusa. The Prusa PSU. Uh, for your Mark II S note, though all the Mark II S supplies were 12, all the threes are 24. That's not saying that you couldn't make it work. It's just that's, they are different. You'd have to change up heaters and things like that, but you could get it done. Romeo, what's up? Yeah, I have to say I do like the, thank you, uh, how expensive is the Prusa printer in the U.S.? I'll finish the thought. I do have to say that I like this Delta one a lot better than the other one. Um, the Mark III is like, the kit is 750 U.S. plus about, I want to say 50 or $60 shipping, that's what it costs. Something like that. Joe, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Joe and I have talked in the comments a couple times. Can you use it on the Mark III Bear? Um, the your limitations are going to be your heat. Well, there's going to be a handful of things. Your heater cartridge. Um, what board you use. There's going to be a few things that aren't going to deal with 12 volt. I mean, you could swap those parts out, but uh, I'd have to sit down and think about what, what you would have to do differently. A good personality. I try to be a fun guy. 
right? As long as I can find the right wrench. Yeah, it depends where it comes from, Andy. We do, I get, I get hit with them from some countries, but some countries, no. Included taxes, yes. You do have to pay some import fee uh, from them. I believe it's like $40 or something. I don't remember. It's not cheap to get one, by any means. Um, yeah, that, they, that's called... It's a pin style that plugs into the black... Yeah, those are just uh, ferrules. You can just look for those on Amazon. Uh, they're just crimp-on. They take that square mouth um, crimper style. Those are just wire ferrules. Okay, I think all of our caps are on. Oh, I missed one. Amazon has a Rip Rap Prusa Mark III extruder full kit. What would be in a Mark II extruder full kit? Is it like a bunch of printed parts? Cause that's pretty much all that kit was, was a motor, some printed parts and a gear. 82 sounds high. You could buy a motor for 12 and a gear for, you know, five or six bucks probably. What else would be on that? Unless it includes the hot end or something. Cool. Hot end, X carriage, Penda, probe, PLA parts. I don't know, it still sounds a little high to me. It, I mean, if it was genuine parts, yeah, but you could probably buy all of those parts for just a little bit of money. Plus, you probably wouldn't want to print them in PLA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we got some stuff done. I'm sorry I have to cut this one kind of short. We've only been on for an hour and 20 minutes, but we got the bed installed i did not uh, get this one tightened down we got the bed installed we got the wires put on it we got the keepers done we got all our corners put on we got our lcd put together and on the front we are looking more and more like a 3d printer every stream it's going to be amazing again i want to print benchies by the end of this week and it is wednesday so uh we got to get to it now I did buy this sheet, uh, Dave. I'm not. I don't really remember what company makes these. These are quite a bit thinner than the Prusa sheets. They're aftermarket sheets. I figured I'd just grab one of these to try because it was pretty inexpensive. Uh, but I have about four or five of the Prusa sheets, so between all the printers, we can use whichever one we want. This is from. It is PEI powder coated. Uh, The Kinging, something like that. It's really small. I don't know if I'm reading it. But uh, so we'll, we'll give this sheet a try, see if it's any good. It is very thin. Did I say that already? So we'll give it a try, see how it goes. Cool? Cool. Love that sheet? Awesome. Good to know. Okay, cool. Uh, before we finish with Stargate, you bet. All right, everybody. Uh, I am uh, quarantined. I'm here at the house. I'm safe. I'm not going to catch anything. We will finish this printer this week. We've got the electronics to go. Put the, I got to go find that board. It's over there somewhere. And uh, we should be getting ready to start printing here pretty soon. So the next couple of days, there will be a couple more streams. Uh, look for the notifications. I'll, uh, I'll just fire them up when we're ready to start building. So thank you, everybody, for joining today. And we will see you again very, very